Infants, toddlers, and preschoolers are all at unique phases of development, and because of this, the methods and principles for assessing young children are also unique. There are some important guidelines and things to keep in mind when assessing young children. And let's look at some of the principles for assessment that are laid out in our textbook. First, assessment should be ongoing and use multiple sources of information, settings and activities, different types of assessments, and different observers. So there sh it should be ongoing and there should be many different sources of information coming in to help inform you about a child. Assessment should benefit the child and improve learning. Um, there should be a focus on making progress towards individual goals that are appropriate. So assessment and objectives and development of curriculum are always connected together. There should be a system in place for understanding the assessment data and then using it to plan learning experiences. So this is another principle. We're going to get into that in more depth. Um, the method of assessment should be appropriate to the developmental level. So observations, work samples, and documentation are really appropriate for young children. Um, assessment should be authentic. It should be based in real life activities for young children. It also looks at what children can do independently and what they can do with assistance from other children and adults. So if you think back to Vygotsky's zone of proximal development, that's what we're looking at here. We want to know what, where children are independently and where they still need a little assistance and that's going to help us really plan some of the curriculum for that child. We want to involve the children and the family in the assessment process. Parents in particular should be a valued source of assessment information as well as an audience for the assessment results. And finally, it should be fair for all children. It should be unbiased, culturally and linguistically sensitive, and high stakes decisions are based on multiple sources of information from multiple people and over time. So remember that. Multiple sources of information, multiple people assessing the children, and assessment over time. And this is especially true when we're looking at diagnosis or referral for a uh, multi-factor evaluation. Um, these are never made as a result of a one-time assessment process. There are two major types of assessment, both informal and formal. So some informal assessments are things like observation, teacher-designed measures, checklists, rating scales, rubrics, performance assessment, portfolios, technology-based assessments, and documentation. And we're going to go into detail about each one of those items throughout the course. And then there are more formal assessments. These include screenings, diagnostic tests, and items such as achievement tests that are given you know, to a little bit older children. There are many concerns about the validity and reliability of tests, formal tests for preschoolers. Um, and there's concerns about the appropriateness of tests and assessment strategies in terms of the diversity of young children attending early childhood programs, language development, um, the education of the parent, um, social economic level of the family, the parent's occupation, um, variations within community and cultures, and children with disabilities. So all of these items can affect the validity and the reliability of a test when it comes to young children. Assessment occurs throughout the school year. Um, assessment starts at the beginning of the year. Um, when we assess children primarily through a screening to learn about individuals, differences, and current, um, children's current developmental level. It can help inform us 
of um, children that might need further evaluation. We talked about this earlier, it can give a red flag if children are struggling in an area, but they usually occur one time and at the beginning of the year. And then there's ongoing assessments. Um, those are happening continuously throughout the year. And some are formative, which are um, occurring during an activity or a project that's going on. And others are summative, meaning that they occur at the end of an activity or a project. Then um, there's also assessment which is occurs maybe at the end of a reporting period. So this talks about the children's progress for a period of time, such as like if you're going to sit down in conference with parents throughout the year, you want to sit down and kind of summarize the assessment data during that time. And then there's assessment that occurs at the end of the year where we're creating more summer reports. Where is this child? Where did they begin? And where did they end up? And do those summary reports go on to the next teacher or do they go on to the next school for that child? So this is a, just a kind of a little bit of a look at that assessment process. Of course, it's a lot more complicated than that, but this is more of a simplistic view. There are certain things that teachers should be competent in around educational assessment, and those are some of the things that we'll be looking at also throughout this term. First, teachers should be skilled in choosing assessment methods for appropriate instructional decisions. They should be skilled in developing assessment methods for appropriate for in making instructional decisions. They should be um, skilled in administering, scoring, and interpreting the results of assessments, both teacher-designed and standardized assessments. Teachers should also be using assessment results when making decisions about individual students, about curriculum planning, and about school improvement. Early childhood teachers should be developing valid student grading procedures which use multiple assessments. And so you're looking at children in many different ways and different times and not making decisions on what a child knows or doesn't know just from one observation or one assessment period. Teachers should be skilled in communicating assessment results to children, to parents, other educators and specialists. And they should be skilled in recognizing unethical, illegal, and inappropriate assessment methods and uses of assessment information. Um, there are also quite a few legal and ethical requirements for teachers to be aware of around assessment and evaluation. First, teachers should know federal, state, and local requirements related to assessment. Um, some things that you might want to investigate are that um, families and children with special needs, um, assessment around these children, they, you must have parent consent before assessing for a disability. And um, children are entitled to free and public education in a least restrictive environment. Um, children should be assessed in the language they know, know best. I mean, it seems like common sense, but oftentimes it happens that they aren't. Um, information from all sources must be carefully documented. So whether you're talking with parents or a specialist is coming in and looking at a child, these should all be well documented. Um, accommodations and alternative assessments should be available for children with disabilities. And assessment should help you monitor the progress of a child. Are they learning? How are they growing and developing? And help you to um, understand different IEP goals that a child might have or family service plan goals. Secondly, teachers need to ensure that assessment information is accurate and that it's trustworthy. Teachers have the professional responsibility to make sure the information is dependable and fair and free of bias. Assessment should be done continuously and it should come from multiple sources 
multiple times during the year. I guess you've heard me say that a few times and uh, you'll probably hear it a few more. I just want to make sure you understand that it needs to come from multiple sources multiple times during the year. Um, and assessment environments should not be threatening and they, they should be supportive for young children. And you need to be alert to environmental distractions that might be occurring during assessments when you're doing your assessments. Um, all children should be assessed fairly and this is particular with children with disabilities. So you need to know development um, so that less obvious needs may be detected by the classroom teacher. And you want to be careful not to over identify children with disabilities too. So that's why it's important to have multiple sources and to look at children over time. Um, children, some children need challenges and this can be um, a, something that occurs through assessment data. You want to look at their early experiences, their early learning of basic skills. Are they precocious in, of, in development in a particular area? Um, are they older than other children that are in the group? Or are they creative or gifted or talented in a particular area? These kind of children may need to be challenged and you need to have that assessment information in order to know what are the children interested in and how can you make school fun and exciting for them. Um, Children from diverse social, cultural, and linguistic backgrounds also need some sensitive understanding when it comes to assessment. Children in the U.S. vary in race, ethnicity, culture, degree of acculturation, um, they, their dominant language, their family income, the educational level of the parents, whether they come from a rural, an urban, suburban, inner city, um, home, they differ in their family structure and the family values. They differ in prior school experience. And so we have to be aware of all of those different things that will inform our assessment of young children. Teachers should follow professional and ethical guidelines as well. Be as objective as possible when you're doing your assessments. Know your own biases and avoid categories and labels of children. Observe and evaluate how classroom procedures and instructional practices may be influencing children's behavior and learning. Sometimes it doesn't always come from the children. It comes from the environment. And maintain confidentiality. You should have your assessment data in locked drawers and you should not be discussing assessment information with others unless it's for professional purposes. It's on an as-need-to-know basis. And assessment you should use assessment information in appropriate ways. And know the limitations of each method of assessment and guard against over-reliance on any one method of assessment. Use assessment to make decisions about teaching, to identify significant concerns for individual children, and to help programs improve their educational and development interventions.